All right, one more problem about uh, primes and visibility, primes and composites. Uh, again, based on a book problem, find an integer n such that n to the fifth plus 32 is prime, or explain why such an integer cannot exist. So uh, I want to model the idea of experimenting first, and then getting a hint from that experiment, and then trying some something theoretical. Uh, so to make it a little quicker, I'm going to show you that I've done n equals 1 through 5. Uh, I didn't do n equals 0 explicitly, because that's pretty darn obvious uh, that it's not prime. And I didn't actually do any negative ends, which would totally be legal to experiment with. Okay, uh, But the answers are all negative so far. 1 to the 5th plus 32, 3 times 11. 2 to the 5th plus 32, 64, 2 times 32. 3 5th plus 32 turns out to have a factor of 5 times 55. 4 to the 5th plus 32, 2 times 5, 28. 5 to the 5th plus 32, a little more complicated, 31, 57. That's a little more work to actually see that it's not prime, but it factors as 7 times 11 times 41. Okay. Um, one thing to say is that these guys are obviously silly to try if you just really want it, want it to work here. You're adding an even number, power of an even number, which is going to be even, plus another even number is going to be even. But it's not a bad idea to, to put them in if we want to find out some sort some something systematic going on here. Okay. So now this is where we would say, okay, um, I either want to look at this and look for patterns, or I want to say I want to think about this theoretically, and we're going to do both. Um, so let me show you the the look for patterns thing. Um, I've explicitly written out some factorizations. Those aren't the only factorizations here. And it turns out if we just look at the factorizations a little bit differently, we're going to get a huge hint. And this, this one's a little hard to see without a lot of playing around, but it's a great example of finding a pattern from the data. So that's 3 times 11. This is 2 times 32. It's also 4 times 16. Ooh, that looks ugly, doesn't it? It's 4 times 16. OK, so what? Right, 3 times 11, 4 times 16, 5 times 55. This one, oh, I don't know if it fits a pattern here. It's back to 2, 7 times something. Huh, 3, 4, 5, question mark, 7. Huh, well, let's see. That guy factors. Does 528 divisible by 3? It is. Um, it's 3 times, see if I can do that in my head, 3 times 176. Okay, or in other words, 6 times 176. Interesting. So we're seeing not just that the answers are no, but there seems to be maybe a consistent reason why uh, this isn't prime. 3, when n equals 1, it's divisible by 3. When n equals 2, it's divisible by 4. When n equals 3, it's divisible by 5, 6, 7. Huh, very interesting. Not a proof, but very suspicious. OK, so that's one way you might see that there's maybe a consistent reason why this is never going to be prime. OK, and that's going to tie in with the more algebraic approach. OK, so another approach here, super powerful, is related to algebra. OK, we're not going to use algebra, a lot of complicated stuff about polynomials and algebra and things like that too much in the course, but you should not forget that you know some stuff about that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to generalize. I'm going to put in letters and actually change letters where we don't necessarily absolutely have to. I'm going to call that n an x to activate sort of that algebra rec recall out of our brain. That's x to the fifth plus 32. Ooh, and I'm also going to realize, hey, that's x to the fifth plus 2 to the fifth. That might be very important. I'm adding two fifth powers. Well, you know what? I'm just going to call, I'm going to generalize that. I'm going to call that x to the fifth plus y to the fifth. And maybe it's really something about just adding any two fifth powers. Okay, that guy has a factorization. And I picked one that's a little less well-known than some of the other ones, um, mainly because I want you to be able to do book problems where, where they do use some of the more well-known factorizations. But this should be something you've seen. Um, and we can actually kind of guess as to what it should be. Um, what we're noticing here is that n plus 2 is always, always seems to be a factor. Well, let's see. That would translate into x plus y. Is this always factorable by x plus y? You bet. Now, it's really important that these powers are odd. 
if it was like x to the fourth plus y to the fourth, it doesn't always factor as x plus y times some other some nice other polynomial. But when it's x plus y x to an odd plus y to the same odd, it turns out that that does factor x to the four x plus y times x to the fourth. That you're going to need that to get to the x to the fifth. That's going to add in an, a y x to the fourth that I totally don't want. So subtract it off somehow. Ooh, I bet that would work if I had an x cubed y here. Because let's see how that works. x cubed y times x is x to the fourth y. x to the fourth oops, times y is x to the fourth y. With that sign uh, with a minus, that's going to cancel out. OK, but what did I just add in? I added in an x cubed y squared, aha, with a negative sign. Ooh, I can kill that off. I'm going to have x, x squared y squared here. So this guy times the x gives an x cubed y squared with a plus. That guy. Um, and that cancels out the fact that this gave this times this gave an x cubed y squared with a minus. But I've now I've added something in that I don't want, namely x squared y cubed. Okay, I'll subtract that out. And we're starting to see the pattern here. You just take one power off of the x and put it on the y. So minus x y cubed, and then it ends up with a plus y to the fourth. If you multiply it out carefully, you'll see that everything inside cancels. The only thing don't cancel is x to the fifth and the y to the fifth. And because these are odd numbers, you end up with a plus and not a minus. Okay, so again, a little bit more obscure algebra factorization. It's kind of cool to see a use for it, which you might not have seen a use for it ever, even if you did learn in algebra class. Okay, and what does that say here? It says, putting back the n and the, and the 2, it says that n to the fifth plus 2 to the fifth is n plus 2. That's an integer. That's the point here, is that we've got an algebraic factorization such that when we put in x as an integer n and y is the specific integer 2, everything here is going to be an integer. And then that's n to the fourth minus uh, 2n cubed plus 4n squared minus 8n uh, plus 16. Okay, and so anything you can possibly write that's a fifth power of an integer plus the fifth power of two is going to be divisible by n plus two, and this other much more complicated factor with the end of the fourth and everything. But that's a good example of how an algebraic factorization almost always gives you a numerical factorization for integers. The only way that wouldn't work is if this factorization specifically used non-integer coefficients, but it doesn't. It's just, it's just using plus or minus. Okay. Um, so the answer is absolutely no. It, you cannot create a prime number that's of this form from a basic algebra fact.